What's going on guys? Welcome back, Leo Patzel Productions. Thank you very much for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna be having a closer look at this brand new wireless video transmission system made by Hollyland. <laughs> This is their latest lineup, which is the Pyro series. And today in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys the Pyro S, which supports HDMI and S for SDI. So stick with me guys, because there's a lot of information to cover in this video. I appreciate you guys watching. Let's jump right into it. Alright guys, so hopefully you guys have all been doing alright. I do appreciate you guys tuning in, but we do have quite a bit of information to cover in this video, so stick with me. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as you guys saw within the unboxing, you can see that we do have everything included with the kit. Again, we have one transmitter, one receiver. We do also have included antennas that we can go ahead and screw on simply to the transmitter and receiver. We do have a quarter 20 mount, which is a swivel hot shoot mount, which is going to allow us to either screw into the bottom of the transmitter or the receiver and mount it either onto our camera or tripod etc and they do also have included in the kit an AC to DC adapter which is going to allow us to power either the transmitter or the receiver via the DC input so this wireless transmission system is capable of sending and receiving up to 4k 30 frames per second so this pyro s does operate wireless transmission on a 2.4 G and a 5g frequency bands so so that is going to be a nice feature so therefore it can just automatically switch between those two frequency bands and give us the best strongest signal the pyro s does have a minimum latency of 50 milliseconds and that is in an interference free environment so we do have an option within the menu settings that we can go ahead and either turn on or turn off a broadcast mode so for an example if you want to go ahead and turn on broadcast mode what that's going to allow you to do is connect one transmitter up to four receivers so do keep this in mind if you plan to use broadcast mode it's going to restrict our line of sight distance range between the transmitter and the receiver from 1300 feet and in broadcast mode it's going to be 650 feet so you're not going to have that far of a distance range but you will be able to connect four receivers to the one transmitter so as far as the maximum distance range between the transmitter and the receiver we have a maximum range of 1300 feet which is 400 meters and again keep that in mind that it needs to be an LOS line Line of sight range between the transmitter and the receiver the transmitter supports HDMI input 4k 30 frames and SDI input at 1080p the receiver supports HDMI output at 4k 30 frames per second and the SDI output supports 1080p the flexible power supply options including the DC locking which we have the connection at the side of both the transmitter and the receiver along with the MPF battery option that we can go ahead and power each of these devices with MPF batteries. The Pyro S transmitter supports streaming via a wireless network card so again at the side of the transmitter we do have a USB-C connection and we can go ahead and connect a wireless network card and that's going to supply an internet access and then from there we can open up the Hollyview app and live stream directly from the app. The receiver does support USB video class UVC so therefore you can go ahead and send the signal from the transmitter to the receiver and on the receiver USB-C connection to our PC via USB and open it up for an example in Zoom, OBS or vMix just as a simple video camera input source device. I've already tried it here on OBS and it's been working fantastic with very minimal delay. 
So as far as powering on the transmitter and the receiver for your very first time, I'm going to tell you it's very user friendly. I didn't have to do nothing besides connect my HDMI connections, connect my power sources and power it on and bang within a few seconds or so, call it 30 seconds, I had a video image coming to my receiver wirelessly from the transmitter over here onto my camera. So guys, check this out. We can download the Hollyland Hollyview app, which is going to allow us to connect to this transmission system wirelessly. It's a free app, and therefore we can actually go ahead and monitor wirelessly whatever the camera operator is filming, for an example, and we can go ahead and add our own custom LUTs. So I've actually imported my own custom LUT over here onto the iPad using the Hollyview app, and along with my mobile phone, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I was able to connect the the iPad, my mobile phone, and along with this director's rig over here that's connected to the receiver. And therefore, now I have three images, just to give you an example in my scenario, wirelessly all from this transmitter. So overall, I do find this app to be very useful. It does have a bunch of features like histogram, waveform, false color. We can zoom in, we can add LUTs, we can actually import our own custom LUTs. We can actually press record, so it's going to record the video. So whatever the camera is seeing it's going to record it directly to the mobile phone or the iPad which is fantastic we can actually take screenshot pictures so it's really nice that we can go ahead and actually send these pictures out if we want to to social media or send them to the director or send them to the client to kind of show them how things are working so it's really nice to use the Hollyview app I really do find it helpful so let's go ahead and have a closer look at the transmitter over here starting off with the front of it you'll notice that we are greeted with this nice beautiful display screen which is actually pretty bright even for outdoors use and to the right hand side of the transmitter on the front you will notice that we do have these three buttons and again that's going to allow us to navigate through the menu so next over here onto the left hand side of the transmitter you'll notice that we do have an SDI input connection and along with an HDMI input connection which is a really nice feature about the Pyro S because it's going to allow us to be able to use both types of connections HDMI and SDI Next over here onto the far right hand side, you'll see that on the very top, we do have the power on and off switch. So just under the power switch, we do have a USB-C connection. And again, as we talked about earlier on the transmitter over here, that USB-C connection is going to allow us to connect a wireless network card. So therefore we can provide a network internet connection to this transmitter. And therefore now we can go ahead and live stream via the Hollyview app. So just under the USB-C connection, we do have a DC input connection, which is going to allow us to supply a DC input anywhere from 6 volts to 16 volts DC and that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm actually powering this transmitter via the V-mount battery and I'm using a D-tap to DC cable and it is supplying about 14.4 volts from this V-mount battery over here. This is the CG Cine S150 and this one V-mount battery is powering my whole rig. It's powering my camera, powering my monitor and it's also powering the Hollyland transmitter over here via the DC connection that we have at the side and as we briefly talked about earlier we can power the transmitter and the receiver via the MPF battery option as well at the bottom of the transmitter and the receiver we do have quarter 20 thread mounting option which is going to allow us to mount the transmitter for an example onto our camera or onto our gimbal or onto like a mini tripod if you need to and the receiver as you guys can see I'm actually using the Holly Land swivel mount which is included with the kit I have it mounted over here onto my director's rig just underneath the receiver and it just simply screws in nice and tight and firm and I can adjust the angle if I like to. And at the top of the transmitter we do have these three threaded mounting options for the paddle antennas which again those antennas are going to support that 2.4G and 5G frequency band. So in regards to the build quality and design of the Pyro S I'm going to say that the transmitter and the receiver are both made out of nice lightweight metal. They are not heavy whatsoever but they do feel like they're a nice quality durable build I'm really impressed with that which kind of keeps my rig nice and lightweight especially the fact that I'm powering the transmitter via my V mount battery which is already mounted on my rig powering my camera and my monitor so that actually makes me think about the internal cooling system
system of the Pyro S transmitter and receiver. I will mention that they do have built-in fans and it does have a bunch of holes for ventilation. And within the menu, we can set the fan cooling system to the auto setting, which I am currently using, or we can also set it to the low fan setting as well. So the other thing that I like to mention to you guys about the transmitter and how I have it connected to this rig over here. So I just wanted to explain again, I am using the HDMI connection and the HDMI from my camera is actually being sent over here to my monitor. This is an OCG7 monitor, which does support HDMI input and output and along with SDI input and output. But again, my camera is sending an HDMI signal. So I'm sending the HDMI from my camera to my camera monitors input, uh, HDMI input. And then from there, I'm sending the HDMI loop out from the monitor to the transmitter over here as the HDMI input. So that's how I have it connected. Now that you guys are more familiar on my transmitter setup, how I have it mounted, connected, etc. Let's go ahead and have a closer look over here at the receiver that I have mounted onto the, my director's rig. So starting off looking at the front, very similar to what we have on the transmitter. We do have this nice display screen, which is nice and easy to see. We do also have the buttons onto the right hand side to be able to navigate and select throughout the menu system. We do have the three antennas at the top. At the left hand side, we do have the HDMI output connection, which I'm currently using right now, sending the HDMI output from the receiver to the HDMI input onto the monitor. We do also have an SDI output. And again, in this case, I'm not using SDI connection. Onto the right hand side, just like how we have onto the transmitter on the receiver, we do also have the power on and off switch. We do also have that USB-C connection. And in this case, that USB-C connection is going to allow us to connect the receiver to our PC via the USB to USB-C connection. And we can also use that adapter that's included with the kit, which is the OTG USB-C adapter. And therefore, now we can open it up in Zoom or vMix, OBS, whatever kind of streaming software, for an example. And you can go ahead and add that as a camera input device, which is really nice. So the USB-C connection on the transmitter and the receiver are also there for any firmware upgrades into the near future. So for an example, we can connect them to our PC and then download and install the firmware when that comes in the near future. And just under the USB-C connection, we do have that DC power input. Again, six to 16 volts DC input. And this receiver is also being powered via a V-mount battery. So as you can see at the bottom of the receiver, we do also have that quarter 20 thread mounting option. And what I've done is take advantage of the included swivel mount that's included with the kit and I've mounted over here onto my director's rig via the hot shoe connection and now it's nice and solid and secure. And again, at the back of the receiver, we do have the option to power it via an MPF battery. So some additional features about this wireless transmission system, we can actually go over here on the transmitter within the menu settings, and we can change the different scene modes. So we have two different scene modes. We have smooth and HD mode. So HD mode is going to provide the best picture quality. And as far as smooth mode, it's going to give you the longest distance range uh, line of sight along with being low latency. So smooth does sound like a nice option because it's going to give you the most distance and it's going to be the most smoothest in regards to the latency. But if you do need the HD mode to provide that nice quality image as best as possible that we can at 4K 30 frames per second, for an example, maybe you're going to be live streaming, that might be a good option. So guys, check this out. Another additional features about this kit, we can actually go within the transmitter and the receiver menu settings and we can assign each of these transmitters and receivers to different groups. I believe we have up to eight groups approximately and we can actually assign different transmitters and receivers. So therefore, when we change the group, now that stream, that signal is going to be coming in automatically, all of the receivers and transmitters that are connected to that group. So overall, I really do feel that's going to come in really helpful, especially on bigger production sets. All right, guys, let's go ahead and have a closer look at the display screen that we have here on the transmitter and receiver to see what kind of information we do have available to us. So for me to explain this to you, I think the best option is for me to go ahead and show you guys the user manual because it clearly shows us the information that we have over here on the transmitter display screen. It's nice and labeled and shows all of that. So you can go ahead and just pause the video if you want to see exactly what each icon means. And onto the right hand side of the manual, we do have the receiver display screen, which is showing us all of those icons and the meaning as well. So again, feel free to stop the video 
and take a look at this layout. So next, let's go ahead and briefly talk about the different options that we have within the menu settings. So as we already talked about the scene mode, we have HD mode and smooth mode. We do also have broadcast mode. We do have the group pairing we talked about, the fan settings, the system settings, which is going to allow us to adjust frozen frame. We do have the Wi-Fi information. We can actually reset the transmitter and the receiver. We can change the language and it's also going to show us the firmware version that is currently being run onto these transmitters and receivers. So as far as the receiver menu settings, very similar to the transmitter, but we do have an additional one over here which is labeled as frequency scan. So therefore, the receiver is actually going to do a scan and kind of show you guys which channels are the best channels to use. It's going to highlight them in red for the bad channels and green for the good channels. And therefore, you can go ahead and manually select the channel that you want to use from that frequency scan, or you can just go ahead and leave it on auto and it will just automatically change the different frequency channels depending if there's any interference which is also a nice feature leaving it on auto well guys it looks like we reached that time of the video to give you my overall thoughts and opinion of the pyro s if you guys cannot tell throughout the course of this video i've definitely been impressed with the build quality the overall functions and features that we have available i'm super impressed with the holly view app the fact that we have the waveform the histogram the focus peaking zebras we can load our own custom LUTs. we can record we can take a screenshot we can share it it has so many features i probably can't even name them all the 2.4 g and the 5g frequency band fantastic it's just going to create a nice stronger signal 1300 feet maximum line of sight distance range that is crazy super far the 50 milliseconds of latency which is really nice and also the different modes between broadcast mode we have hd mode or smooth mode it's really nice to see that we have all of these options built into this kit at a reasonable price all with hdmi and sdi so overall guys i'm definitely impressed with this kit what i recommend it 100 percent the uvc mode as well and the fact that we can go ahead and live stream directly from the receiver it's crazy there's so many features if you guys have any questions or comments concerns let me know down in the comment section down below i obviously can't cover everything in this video but i did want to just kind of cover the basics get you a little bit more familiar so you can guys can kind of get set up understand it and maybe kind of decide if this product is right for you i'm going to leave any links down in the description down below so overall i'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next video much love if you guys made it this far and we'll catch you guys on the next one till next time peace